Uh, one of the groups in my class uh, that fall selected Dick Gregory as their soul maker, the person who they saw themselves in the most. And by doing that, they forced me to have to listen to the entire interview in order to be able to integrate it fully into my class. And there was one clip, if you can imagine this, one clip that completely changed my life as an educator. I don't know where my daddy is. The lights is cut off. It's cold. In the wintertime, there was no such thing as refrigerators then or central air conditioning or central heat. So I got a group of thugs, hoodlums, criminals, who don't have the integrity to know what a lot of black folks was going through, and they give me homework to a house with no lights. And in my first book, I talked about how this, this black folk bought a turkey by our house for Christmas, and they knew our lights was cut off and we had no heat and they bring us a raw turkey. My mama was nice, she said, thank you. I, I went and threw it in the backyard. And so, <clears throat> how do you give me homework? How is my mama supposed to help me with trigonometry when she can't spell it? Huh? She ain't never had arithmetic. That's the next move. Huh? If I got to live in this society that demands certain things, then they go to the church and say, we're going to have study. See, the most trifling, ignorant, dog-time black have never wanted their children to do bad in school. Huh? Have never wanted their children to grow up and be nothing but humpless and pimps. On lesson, they were crazy. Didn't you, you give but when I come home with my homework and there's nobody there to help me, and then... I, I get pneumonia. I'm out of school two weeks. I go back. They didn't stop nothing. It continued on. So the next thing I know, I'm I'm, I'm being laughed at. And, and so then I quit school. I didn't. That's where your juvenile gangs was coming from. Folks that had they stayed, they could have been PhDs. But there were circumstances that nobody surrounded me but demanded certain things out of me in a white racist system and didn't leave leeway. And I do think this clip is largely responsible for me challenging myself and engaging with the digital archive to help create the Innovations and Pedagogy Fellowship, where professors commit themselves to intently use the digital archive in their classroom. And part of this commitment is born out of one thought. It is if we continue to bring pedagogy content to these students that is devoid of black experiences such as those that exist in the digital archive, we have continued the raw turkey delivery service. One of the issues for a historian especially, it's really important to understand what we call the primary source, and that's those first-hand accounts. And one of the important interventions that we have to begin to make is to show our students that those sources are not all written down sources. Listening to those, it's just mind-blowing to be quite candid. Information that you could have never, you just couldn't have found it because those books aren't written about some of those people or those stories just haven't made the history books. But these are people who have made history. Thankfully, my library subscribes to the history makers so that my students have access to all of this. So that's terrific. And I think as people learn to use these now in the pandemic, that will continue. I think there should be a period of discovery. So many things that I learned while I was studying about the history makers that it's outside of the history books because history books will only show one particular part of the story. But when you can hear someone's narrative, it brings it to life. It was the first time I used an oral history database. I'd really never seen something like that before. So actually being able to hear someone talk about their experience rather than reading it was much more meaningful. So I feel like my education, especially around Black history, was 
really lacking. So it was really important for me to be able to broaden my perspective on Black history, Black excellence, just hearing stories of people trying to change a country so that way people coming behind them don't have to experience the same hardships that they were facing was really important to me um, and to my learning as a public affairs major. I think it is absolutely vital and important that we accurately preserve and make available these stories of the lived experiences of African Americans so that we preserve our democracy moving forward. I honestly cannot think of a class that I have been in in my life where I would not have benefited from the um, History Makers Archive and learning about different perspectives. This would fit in extremely well in the political science space. There are a lot of untold stories about political influence and shaping modern day democracy and how we preserve it. Wherever you are situated is to center Blackness. Anyone, anywhere can bring in Black voices in terms of books and the page. Everyone does this well. When you bring the archive into the classroom, you bring Black bodies. You bring literal Black accents. You bring Black gestures. You teach people not to minimize the person who's moving their hands like I'm doing right now. That we don't all have to sit quietly. There are so many different ways to be Black. So many different ways to be a Black academic. So many different voices, accents, dictions. The archive embraces them all.